I'm going to record local and then upload to make sure we don't have any issues. Okay. And you are live. Thank you very much. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Edwin, and um, I'm going to be teaching some null binding and a little bit of history. Um, I have a PowerPoint to share, and I'll go ahead and get that shared over. Bear with me while I pull this over. Let's see. All right. Here we go. Willow, could you put the link to the class in the chat so that I can share it publicly? Do you have the link? Oh, the oh link to the class. Okay. I was like, I do I sure. did put I this in um the PowerPoint in the the shared page on Facebook. I'll oh no, that's great. Pages. I just I know there's more people who want to learn, so I'm just gonna go poke folks. Perfect. So this is null binding, um, a little bit of the history and how to. Um, I took that picture of one of my mittens because I thought that was such a pretty, pretty background. Put my name, Edwin Sayo Got Heard, and my mundane name. And anybody is welcome to ping me afterwards. I'm glad to do one on one if you want to learn some more and um, keep practicing. Okay, what is null binding? Oop. So, null binding, needle binding, nail binding, it's a knotless netting with a single needle. Um, as far as I can tell and what reading I've done, this technique was developed independently in different parts of the world, simultaneously or at different times. Um, and it was already used, already very old and used during the Bronze Age. So this is a very old technique that's been around a very long time. And um, when I was doing some reading, it seems like Finland is one of the one of the rare places that has continued the tradition to present times. And you know, only recently has it become popular again. And so there's more information about it. Um, which is awesome. So the one cool thing about null binding is that it doesn't unravel, unlike crocheting and knitting. So when you're doing making the fabric, you know, you're basically making independent knots, even though they're not hard knots. But so when you wear, if you wear a hole in it or get in a hole in it, it's not going to just unravel on you, which is cool. Um, this technique is used with a single needle, even though you can do it without a needle. I personally do not do it out without a needle, but I, I mean, it is definitely a possibility that you don't even need a needle. You just do it with the yarn or the thread that you have. So um, it can create a flexible fabric, as we know, socks, hats, mittens, but you know, we saw some examples last night where they were making 3D objects. So it's very flexible and versatile on what to be able to do things with it. Um, there is over a thousand different varieties of the stitch um, in different forms in different places around the world. Um, different places, so basic, from what I was reading, the number of variations of the different stitches is infinite. I mean, there's different techniques for different things, I guess, depending on what you're gonna do. I am teaching the Oslo stitch today. Um, it was named after a place where an example was dug up in Oslo, Nor Norway, but that stitch has also been found in other places. Um, working knowledge of this particular stitch survived in Scandinavia until the 20th century. Um, types of needles that you can use. They can be made from various things, bones, wood, horn, iron, bronze, etc. About anything that could be made out of a needle. Um, even, I mean, modernly plastic, acrylic, you know, acrylic stuff. I think anything that this feels comfortable for you and works is what you need to use. <laughs> um, I have used a um, straight noodle, 
but you know, they could be long, short, straight, curved. I want to try some curved ones at some point, but I need to go find some. Blunt and sharp, probably depending on what piece you're doing. I have a blunter needle, which works well with the yarns, but I imagine if you had a thinner yarn, you would want a, maybe a little bit of a, a point, more of a point, so it's easier to get through the loops. Now, um, yarn, you can use about anything you want. I suggest for the first project, do a lighter color and a, th a thicker, like a worsted weight yarn because it's easier to see and feel. Wool is also helpful if you're going to felt when, as you join the new thread because it's not a continuous thread you break off a piece and work with that until you run out, then you joined the next piece to it. Um, I really like the wool I got from Hobby Lobby, um, Fisherman's Wool. Um, it says it's perfect for felting. I mean, it, it feels nice, it felts together well, and it's a light natural color of wool, which is, so I've, I lear I've learned with that, but I've used other things also. I must have had that slide twice. I'll have to go fix that. <laughs> so my biggest advice with null binding, um, be patient with yourself. I worked on this off and on for a couple of years before I even got it. I would pick it up and I'd have a tingly mess and I'd have to put it down. And you don't unravel it because it's not. And so I just clip that piece off and throw it away or you know, keep it <laughs> as a bookmark it's, it takes, it takes time. Um, a good project to start with would make, maybe make a small pouch or wrist warmers, you know, don't have to worry about shaping things. Um, if it's just a small little thing. Um, if you make a piece of clothing, which I have done a couple mittens, but not matching, try on the piece several times. That's some advice I was reading about, like do a few rows, try it on. That way you can see how it's, as you add or, de you know, increase or de decrease, you can see how it's shaping and, you know, how it's fitting or if you need to add or take away stitches to get it to fit right. Um, I will show this as we're going, but I wanted to mention there is different ways to add new thread. You do not have to felt. Hence, you don't have to use wool. Um, felting is a very common way for doing the wool, which you use a little bit of water or spit to do that, to felt the, the threads together. Um, there's the Russian join. Um, I don't know if either of you are familiar with that, but I will go over how to do that. And then there's the lazy join. Basically, you're weaving it back into the fabric on both sides. Um, I have some books that I would recommend. Um, my favorite one has been Null Binding. What in the world is that? And that's where I actually finally learned how to do it. It has, has really a lot of history in there. It's not a very big book, but it teaches five different types of stitches. It has clear black and white photos on how to you know do the different things um, and it has some instructions on like how to construct like a hat and some mittens um, as far as i can tell this first one i mentioned it's it's color pictures and it seems like it teaches the manman stitch or however you pronounce that manman um, and that doesn't show as much it's a it's a thinner book but it's mostly just talking about how to do it, but it's colored pictures and it's a little bit bigger on pictures if that's something you would need. And I recently got this book and I'm really liking it because it has a little bit of history, but this one shows several different ways to start a project, you know, not just, you know, nodding around your thumb. They had something called mouse ears and something. I haven't tried all the starting ways, but, and they even told, we're talking about how to start left-handed, which I haven't run across anybody with that particular problem yet, but I'm sure I will. There's, so I, I thought that was very good. You know, they also talk about how to join. They have some different patterns and finishing techniques 
um, some that I hadn't seen in other places yet. It had like how to like sort of do a braiding at the edge of your project, which I thought was really fun. So um, I do have this posted and I can link it if I need to, but I, these are the three null binding books I have and I like them all for various reasons. Let me get out of that. All right. There we go. All right, I am just gonna hop right in and show and if you need me to stop and slow down for any reasons please let me uh, please tell me so because I have taught this once online and I had to be very slow because my camera got we got a little blurry if I went too fast partially because it's a document camera all right the first thing I do um if you're using wool and you're going to felt the joins um it's suggested that you don't cut your yarn because with the little bit rougher edge, it's easier to felt it. So I usually just take my yarn. Um, you need anywhere from sort of arm's length. And I recently figured out how to get longer, which is nice if you don't want to join forever or join, you know, every few things. And I just pull it apart. Um, if, if your yarn doesn't pull apart easily, please just cut it. Um, and then, just get it on your needle. I might have gotten mine a little bit too long. There you go. All right, I am going to change my camera. There we go. So I start um, with basically it's it's like a simple knot, but I'm not going to knot it. I just because this is going to go around my thumb. And I and I put work crosses on the back of my thumb. This is not the only way to start null binding. This is just the way I learned and I do it. So that's the one thing I've learned about this is there's not necessarily one correct way to do a thing. So I have the tail draping off the back. And then the other end, the long end, my working end is, is over my thumb. And your, your working thread is always going over your thumb like that. So this is the first stitch. The first few stitches always feel weird. It feels like you're making a knotted mess. Um, but you just sort of have to keep going. <laughs> All right, so first thing, have my needle, have my um, yarn, I'm going to go behind my thumb, pull the needle through, making sure that this stays here, this working thread stays here. And it's definitely something you don't have to worry about and just, I'm pulling, I, I have a long thread, pulling that all the way through. And now you have, you should have two secure loops on your thumb. If you pull on the working thread, it's going to tie it in this one right here. And then you have the, the working thread sort of hanging off. All right, now we're going to get to the stitch because the stitch, so that was the starter. The stitch involves actually grabbing this first, this loop that's nearest the end of your thumb. So you put the needle through that, through the front, and I'm twisting. So I put it through the front and I twist back. And so it's flush with my thumb, my the back of my thumb. And it's going to go between my thumb and those two threads, the, the thread that's looped around and then the thread that's just sort of hanging over. And again, I'm going to pull that all the way through until it tightens, that loop tightens on my thumb. So it was under both threads, the loop yes. of your thumb and the loop of under. Yes. And that's for this technique. This is the Oslo stitch. 
um, there is different ways. Sometimes you just catch one. Sometimes you, you know, you don't twist it like I'm twisting that one a little bit. Um, but yeah, for this particular technique, you're, you're, you're going, you're actually going, making sure you go behind really these three. Cause there's, when you look at the back, it looks like there's three, there's the two that are on your thumb. And then there's that working one. And that's part of, you know, where you're looping. Now I will say that some people go ahead and push um, the one nearest the tip off before they start. I found it easier, especially I was starting just to leave it on. That way I didn't lose track of it until I was ready for it because I can grab it and push it off at the same time. So basically I'm going through the hole towards the front and then I'm twisting it around and going behind the two. So basically you do that for a length. Um, null binding is usually done in a round. Um, I haven't started with a little circle like you would possibly at the top of the hat, but you know, I go basically straight for a while until I'm ready to join, you know, to be able to make a pouch or a, um, you know, a midden. And then it was, I should have showed it before I pulled it. I'll do a few more stitches. It sort of um, bunches up in, in the back and it looks like a tangled mess. But um, when you, you should be able to pull at the tail after you've done a few stitches, which is behind your thumb. So let's see, is it focusing? Maybe. I'm trying to get it to focus, doesn't want to focus. Um, it has, it's sort of a little bunched up where I just did a couple of stitches. But if I, you know, pull it out a little bit, it flattens out. And it's actually, you know, looking like some stitches there. I mean that, and that's the first start of it. I have a, I know yeah. what this is. I, um, well, I, I made a hash of it, but um, hold on one second. Let me, can I show you something? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> so there's this old thing that we were taught to do. It's like finger weaving. Have you ever done that? Yes. This is finger weaving on one finger. Yes. Ah. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got that. I can do that. And the thing is, you know, I'm showing one different technique. If you have a slightly different variation, but it's still creating sort of a consistent pattern. I mean, yeah. Is anything wrong with that? Um. Now I do have another piece that I'm gonna, so the other thing is, okay, so this is on my thumb, mm -hmm. but I can't sit here for however many hours and get this project done. There's just no way. So you can pull this off your thumb. It's fine. It, and it, I would recommend, you know, practicing pulling it off your thumb and putting it back on your thumb. So you sort of know what it looks like off and on. That way you can get set back up. If you do pull on these loops, it will tighten and make a knot. So um, I usually just like stick my needle through the hole. You know, I might weave it through the weaving a little or the knot binding a little bit and then like stick it in my yarn, you know, and try to keep my kids out of it. <laughs> but I mean, I that's the one thing I would recommend is practicing pulling it off and on your your thumb because you know there's no way you're going to sit down and get a whole project done in one sitting 
unless it's a tiny project or you're spending hours on it, you know, you have to be able to put it down. And I, you know, you probably could even get like a, a dowel rod or something like that to be able to keep that, you know, thumb opening. Now, I, I have not done it without my thumb. I know you can null bind without having it looped around your thumb, you, especially for that, the tiny null binding, they wouldn't have necessarily done that um, with it looped around their thumb because it would have made the stitches too big. Um, but as a beginner, <laughs> you know, and I consider myself still a beginner, um, it is totally fine. And it, and with the practice and consistent stitches, you, you know, you can make beautiful things. All right. So I'm getting a, you know, a straight piece of null binding here, but I, I don't want to go a straight piece forever. I want to make a little pouch. So how do I connect the pieces to start making a little pouch? So here's one I started a little bit ago. It's a little bit longer, so it gives me a little bit more space. And I'm just going to put that back on my thumb. And this is why I need more needles is because I have to take my one needle that I like and switch back and forth between projects. All right, so I have that and I have my end. And the thing, if you've ever done any crocheting or knitting, you know, as they say, is try not to twist your piece, making sure it's, you know, not twisted in the middle. You know, make sure it's a round piece, however you want it. So as you are connecting your other end and continuing to stitch on top of this for your second row, you start by putting your needle through the, the cloth, I guess, that you've already created. So you put it through that first. Then you go back to your, the tip of your thumb and go through that hole, you know, do your little twist and put it um, behind those two. Of course, then you have the tail. My tail's in the way. I'll get that tail out of the way. Okay, now I'm connected. And I've, I've, I have a loop with one string. Um, now I'm going to go to the next loop. And I'm basically doing one, one per one stitch. Um, Put the needle through that first or the next loop. You know, put your needle through the loop that was on the tip of the thumb, twist it around to behind, and go. So um, now this is where you can start as you go increasing and decreasing too. You know, increasing, putting more than one stitch in a hole just like you would do crocheting or knitting. Um, decreasing, um, one of the ways you can do it is just by like skipping a hole. Or, um, so like, let's see, this white is so shiny. So that's a stitch and that's a stitch. I can go through both of those stitches to decrease at the same time. I mean, I wouldn't decrease too quickly, you know, like try to do like three or four because it's going to look wonky. But basically, just keep going around like that. Of course, now I'm running into another issue. I'm running out of yarn. So I'm going to do my first technique. I'm going to pull another piece of of yarn and I have for ease I have this little glass of water which is really used for um it can use be used for ink you know for dip pens <laughs> my husband does calligraphy so there's lots of little containers around here so I I dipped my finger and I got um the end of the yarn 
yarn wet. And basically you just lay your other yarn next to it. And you can try to unravel a little bit and get them in or just go with like that and just, you know, friction rub. And that helps felt it together. And then give a little tug. That's pretty good. The water really helps. I've tried to do it without wetting a little bit and it just doesn't felt as well. Um, then you get your needle back on. I usually take off my needle while doing that. And see, that's the thing. I had to take off my thumb to do to add my new thread. Now I'm going to put my stuff back on my thumb and continue to do some knob lighting. And that part um, that I felt it on is just a little bit thicker, but once you get it in your um, fabric, you won't really be able to tell. Now let's, let me go over, make sure I still have some, I still have time. Um, go over the other joinings. So we have, and I'm going to pull out my book because I have some good pictures of it. And I'll also show. So this is in null binding. What in the world is that? And they show the felted find the felted um, adding a thread. This is the lazy join. I don't know if you can see how they've basically took the thread and wove it between the past stitches. And then they start working with the new one and then you'll be able to just weave. And then the Russian join is you basically loop them together and then take a thinner needle, the one that actually can go through the yarn or the thread and pull it through the middle of it. All of these techniques have worked. I've tried all of them. I'm going to pull out, I'm going to do a Russian join. Pull out this thing I've been working on. Of course, this fabric might show up a little bit better. Started working on a pouch the other day. All right. For the Russian join. Let's see. Basically, I sort of take the two ends and just cross them. So they're looped on either side. And then I will work my thread or my needle, my needle sort of in between um, the yarn, make sure, you know, it's looped. And this one, I sort of just, it depends on the yarn, just twist around. And I will have to say this, this needle is a little bit thick for this yarn, but it works. And then I thread my needle with my, one of my ends. And then I pull it through. I'm holding on to the end and that's not good. So that's pretty secure on one side. I do have a little bit of an extra thread which I could either cut or continue to work in. But I'm gonna do my other side. So I got this side done, now I need to get my other side. Of course, you know, this is helpful for many kinds of 
fibery um, things that you might be doing. So pull that through. And now that's a pretty um, secure little uh, join there. It's not going anywhere. I'm just going to trim this excess. I mean, you could work it in. It can get in the way too. I try not to make things more difficult for myself than I have to have to be. So, so again, I have, I'm just doing the same stitch here and you can see, I just sort of have to readjust my thumb. Now, so you know, the, the loop that should go back on your thumb first should be the inner part is the one that tightens if you pull the working thread. If you pull the working thread and the one that tightens, that should go on first. And the one that should be the, near the tip won't tighten. Because this is the one that you had just, was the last loop that, that you made. So again, you just go into your material, grab the next loop. Since I'm just making a pouch, I'm keeping it even. Get that, that loop that was off the tip of the thumb, twist behind, and then you're on to your next thing. Go. So any questions so far? I have one more joining I wanna show, but I've also been covering a lot very quickly. Well, so far I have three, I'll start over again. <laughs> that I, is I met, um, the, the, on the thumb has never, never, I've never been able to figure out on the thumb. Um, there is other ways to do it. Um, I mean, I know there has, I know there's other ways to do it. I haven't played with a lot of those ways. Uh, that's okay. I'm trying to learn on the thumb. <laughs> I don't the other ways. I can do the other ways. All right. I'm going to go back to. I accidentally made something in the round. I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm sorry. And you're fine. And sometimes that's how you discover new things is that you, uh, I accidentally made a circle. Yeah, no, that's right. That's good. And um, you can start that way too. That's a very legitimate way to start. Yeah, but I didn't mean to do it on accident. <laughs> I was trying to pull the something about the way that the um, when it's on your thumb, uh -huh. I couldn't get it to pull straight off. So when I got to the end of the round, I just started adding stitches like I would have been crochet. Yeah. I'm trying to see. I'll have to do some more experimenting with different ways to start. Um, I have, you know, I've seen different people start different ways. I haven't played with that a lot. So the other thing that you can do um, to put on the other thread, I find this easier sort of to have it on my thumb. So I have this short little thread here, which I probably could have gone a little bit further. But basically I have thread on my needle. I'm gonna go back and just pull some and I'm going to leave sort of a tail, a tail on this side. Stop. He doesn't like that. Please stop. Oh. Sorry. No, you're fine. So I'm going to, I need one a little bit. And this is just like weaving in like you would in crocheting and knitting or, you know, weaving or whatever. I'm just taking the, my next thread and weaving it back behind, leaving a little bit of a tail that I could either cut or weave in later. Um, 
but that way with it being on my hand, I can hold it. So it's when I'm pulling my new thread through, I'm not like losing it or pulling it all the way through. Okay, so I wove, I wove that behind. I have this thread that was my working thread and I have my new working thread. And this is working it a little bit, you know, a mess. But I just sort of leave the other one hanging and I go start picking up my null binding again. Because the other thread will just be there and I would just leave it hanging and can then you can go back and leave it in later. Oh, so one of the problem problems I'm seeing is that I my working thread is always behind my thumb, not in front, never in front of my thumb. Yes, you need your uh, working thread hanging over your thumb, at least for this stitch. <laughs> well, when it's behind your thumb, it doesn't do anything. It just falls apart and makes knots. Like I said, I do not claim to know all the different stitches or how all the different techniques. Okay, so first of all, if you start with the knot tied like you're, you're a left hander, or uh -huh. left hander, you touch tight like your right hander. Then I think my tail's going the right way. So maybe my tail's going the wrong way the entire time. Are you left-handed? No, I'm ambi. Okay. Which is why I say, you know, but basically I, I, it feels weird. The first knot. It's like I have not played it um with the left hand yet. I, I've taken a knitting class where I basically um um mirrored the teacher so I could teach so she could teach a left-hander by teaching me and me mirroring it to left-hander. Okay. Very ambi. I I can knit left-handed. Um what was I doing? And I can't remember what it's called, but a certain type of knitting where it basically makes little squares and it's since you have to go back and forth so much, it's easier just to knit right-handed than knit, than knit left-handed. So I can do both. One time left-handed, one time stupid hand. I don't know the difference. There, there isn't a difference. Hand, you know, hand is an artificial construct to me. Yeah. Sort of like left and right. Yeah. It's just what you're used to doing. I feel like I can do both, especially with a little practice because being crafty, you have to use both hands all the time. Okay. Uh, so whenever we put the needle through, we have to very carefully put the head of the needle past the thumb to make sure it come, comes out. I kept, I kept on getting it to come out the wrong side. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I still end up with, you know, three, four, five, six loops on my thumb at some point. Oh. Yeah, you basically are pushing off the one loop that's on the tip of your thumb. And that's the what you put your needle in, you know, from front to back. But you know, you don't pull all the way through, you just twist a little bit and then loop behind. I wish that was showing up a little bit. Oh, there it's, it's focusing um, behind the two that are draped behind, which is the working thread and the actual loop that you just did that actually tightens when you pull on that working thread. Okay. And then again, you know, as I'm doing it, it makes these little, it looks like extra loopy. I mean, you can just tug on them and it should smooth out. But that's, um, that is basically all I have for the teaching the techniques. I just wanted to show how to get started oh. because I know for me, that was the hardest that was the hardest part. And it really did take me a couple of years off and on. I'd put it down for weeks at a time because I was frustrated. And then I would pick it up again and start over because, you know, I was just making a mess. But I eventually got it. I mean, I've made, I actually entered in a, a little ANS competition um, for our local event. And because I had made some little mittens, wonky thumb you know, different sizes. <laughs> None of them were the same size. They're so cute. They are. 
but it was it was good practice and then i i made this big one which does not i did, does not have a match <laughs> Can you show me the beginning stitch again on your thumb so yes. I, can, I can get it? Because I am, yes. I'm still, I tried again and I, I also got, it was the round. I failed again. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I failed so many times and I was so frustrated so many times. And I just kept trying. <laughs> so basically how I start is, you know, basically a simple oh, line. Let, let, leave that for a second. Mm -hmm. So when you have a loop there, it goes around. Yep. I'm, I'm trying to make sure my tail goes the right way. It feels like I'm tying a, no, that was a, that was a normal knot. Sorry. You it's, just, just, it's just a normal knot. I mean, if I pull this tight, it would just be a knot. It's just a knot. But which way do you put it on your thumb then? Do you put it tail up or the tail down? Uh, tail goes down. Goes tail down. goes down. So that's where the knot is right here. Okay. So here's the tail. Tail comes out towards the tip of the thumb. Okay, that, that agrees. Okay. Yep. And then we do the next loop. Does that loop sit behind your thumb or in or up in behind the thumb towards the, the base of the thumb or towards the tip of the thumb on your second loop? So, okay, so tail here, it's knotted behind my thumb. The working loop, is cascading down the front of my thumb. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with the first stitch, there's nothing to grab because this is our first stitch. Mm -hmm. so, so don't go through any loops, just go behind where the, basically where the knot is. Okay. And you okay. pull through. And so that new loop you made is behind the first loop. Yep, the new loop we made is behind the first Wait, loop. Why is there a loop? I just put it through the thing and it, it didn't make a loop. It just made more knot. Like like when you're knitting, I grab the, the string between my 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 small finger and ring finger. Uh-huh. So that it forced it to do a circle. I yeah, I just I'm not getting where the second loop comes from so that it can ca cascade out. Okay. I'm gonna start again. I don't mind starting again. Uh, start again. Starmoker. You're doing a really good job and you're a very patient teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. I do not mind going over this again and again. It's, it can be very frustrating, especially I feel like it's a new concept. So it's a totally different way to, to make things. Yes. So I have put, okay. so you're not, your string is going down. Does that matter? Oh, my string's going down and says towards the tip. It's going the other way now. Yeah. Does it matter? So my thumb is horizontal. I have, I don't know if I tie the knot differently behind my thumb every single time, but I basically have the tail coming down behind my thumb. Okay. And the working thread is. Um, front, okay. Yeah, coming down the front. Mm -hmm. Make sh making sure, so this is near the tip, this is the knot, you know, the loop that I knotted around my thumb, and then the working thread is closer to my hand, just sort of hanging out there. You okay. the cross down to the pad of your hand for that, so you pinch the cross between your middle finger. Yes, and I do, yes, I take my um, pointer finger and pinch there to make sure it's held. And then grab the other one with the back finger so it stays... No? Okay. Yeah, you, you can. I've seen, um, depending how long your tail is, you can knot the tail like around your pinky. I've seen people do that to keep that mm -hmm. out of the way and <laughs> tail, not out of trouble. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely it. So I have this working thread. Mm -hmm. So for the first stitch, I'm just putting the needle where that knot is. So okay. I have, you know, Obviously. the side is cascading. That loop's supposed to go around your thumb. Yes, it's oh, going. To, this is going to yeah, go around okay. my thumb. Yes. I'm creating a basically another knot on my thumb. Okay. And does that string end up below or above? So this string that I'm knotting will be uh, closer to my hand or towards my hand, where that knot will be near the tip. Okay. So I, when I finish pulling it, I'll have three. It'll look like I have three. I have the old one 
that was the working yeah. knot. This is the new knot that we just created. And then I have the new thread. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yep. So I had them reversed and that's why it wouldn't pull out. Um, I had the, I had the, the knot you tie initially as the bottom one and I was putting, and I was just going through the loop on top. Yeah. So the oldest loop now that you, you know, you can, that, that you're about to push off your thumb. Mm -hmm. This, this is where you start the stitch because the first one is just the first stitch and the first stitch is always weird, no matter what, which one you're doing. Um, now we're going to sort of make the fabric. You put it through the oldest loop mm -hmm. from front to back. And then you take your needle and come behind the two again, like you did originally. So you have the old loop, you have the new loop, and then you have the working thread. And again, this is going to end up around your thumb because you're making the new working loop. I want to make sure that stays down. Oh, so when you grab the, the, the loop to make the twist, you pull the thumb. Yes. Ah, Eureka. Yay. Yeah, that's, yeah, two. I got to three and then I fell apart every time. So I'm, I'm not convinced that number five is going to work. <laughs> so, you know, at first it looks sort of like a knot. I don't touch it. Um, I just let it sort of pile up on the back of my thumb. I'm worried about these loops. So the one that tightens should be this one, this one right here. When you pull on your working thread, it should tighten this loop around your thumb. This loop doesn't tighten anymore. That's the old loop now. So how and do you make it tight later when you want them to have smaller loops? Um, I mean, it will tighten a little. I mean, this is what mine looks like off my thumb. Okay. Okay. So it, it, I mean, it, it will, it stretches out. I just, it's to me, don't worry about that now. I mean, the important thing is trying to get to loop consistently. Um, it will look more even and you can get smaller as you practice. <laughs> And, and again, you do not have to do null binding on your thumb. And that's how you get the really tiny stuff. I am not an expert at that, but I know that's how they do it. <laughs> but so we have the old loop, the working loop, and then the working thread. So we're pushing that old loop off and we're going to go through that. And I twist it behind. So I go through, do a little twist make sure as I'm going, the, the needle is going at the, um, the pad of my thumb, the back of my thumb, and making sure that thread is going to go around my thumb and make a loop. I almost did it. Look, it's making thingies. Yay! Because after you get a, a few um, stitches in, you can sort of pull on that tail and the stitches will even out. They won't yeah. look so bunchy and weird. Well, that's the thing like that happens in finger weaving. So um, there, that's what's on the back of my loop right on my thumb right now. It's looking sort of, if it will focus, I don't know if it's going to focus. Um, it's very loopy. It looks very odd, but it's fine. I mean, I would want to do a few more stitches before I pull on it just because, yeah, you just, you can't worry about the back. You just sort of have to keep doing your loops for a few more before it actually evens out a little bit. It feels a little bit like when grandma taught me to do crochet tails. Okay, so mine is all... It looks a mess back there. I mean, it just looks a mess. But when I pull it now, it evens out and it's fine. And it looks like, a, you know, sort of like a thick chain for crochet. I mean, not quite because I have a little bit more thread in there, but. <sighs> All right, we are at. 413. So we still have a little bit of time. 
I mean, I know there's other classes I am willing to stay on as long as you guys want me, but I know we have other things or we can, you know, get. And we've got till four, four 30. We have to four 30. I, I, we started at three 20. Oh, I should say. Okay. So we have a few more minutes. Um, I'm starting over. I have managed to once again, to make a mess, partially because I was using a shorter string. Do you want to continue the recording? Or should we go ahead and stop? stop ah. I think I've showed about all that I know currently, but again, my major thing was just trying to um, show how to start because that's where I got frustrated. <laughs> right, and I'll, I totally understand that. It's, uh, it's, it's very alien.